The infinitive is one of the most pure forms of a verb. As its name suggests, an infinitive is different from a regular or finite verb because it doesn't have a subject and doesn't change its ending because of this. That said, infinitives do come in different tenses and voices. This video will discuss the present passive infinitive, the to form of the verb, but instead of doing the action, the action is being received. We can look at the present passive infinitive in the same way that we can look at some passive verb conjugations by first looking at the active forms. So the present active infinitive ends in an re, are for first conjugation verbs, ere for second conjugation verbs, a short ere for third conjugation verbs, including third io verbs, and an ire for fourth conjugation verbs. The present passive infinitive ends in a re for verbs of the first, second, and fourth conjugations, and so we drop off the re and add the ri. But third conjugation verbs drop the full ere ending and replace it with just a long i. So by example, laudare becomes laudari, monere, moneri, ducere, duci, and audire, audiri. And remember that all passive verbs in English utilize a form of be. So while laudare is to praise, laudari is to be praised. We can go through the rest of the translations too. Moneri is to be warned, duki is to be led, and audiri is to be heard. From experience, the tough one to notice is the third conjugation form, because it's the simple present stem plus an e. Now use. Uh, we see the present passive infinitive in the same sort of sentences as other infinitives. So the complementary use, wollo audiri, I want to be heard, where we have the subject doing the action of the active verb wollo, but receiving the action of the infinitive, audiri. And there's the objective use, dux jubet popolum moneri, the leader orders the people to be warned, or the subjective use, necessa est omnibus olem laudari, it is necessary for everyone to be praised at some time. In these situations, it's easy enough to see the literal translation of the present passive infinitive, the to be blanked. In an indirect statement, where we take the passive phrase like you are praised by everyone, tu ab omnibus laudaris, and then render it indirectly like the teacher says that you are praised by everyone, we use the present passive infinitive, magister dicit te ab omnibus laudari. And whenever we have a passive form, we need to bring in the idea of deponent verbs too. Remember, deponents are verbs that look passive, but have, in English at least, active meanings, possibly originating from verbs that have a meaning with both passive and active implications. For deponents, like sequor or conor, the present infinitive is, or at least looks identical to, this present passive form. Uh, here's the same conjugation list, uh, but this time only with deponent verbs in all conjugations. Conari, to try. Wereri, to fear. Sequi, to follow. And finally, potiri, to obtain. You can see the present passive ending in each of these infinitives, even though the English translation of these infinitives is active. But here's the important thing. You can also check out this infinitive ending in order to determine which conjugation number a deponent verb belongs to. Just like the active present infinitive forms, they are all unique, and we can use them to help us classify. The origin of the present passive infinitive seems to lie in this third conjugation form of a long i, e. By looking at other languages like Sanskrit, it appears that the infinitive ending in e is the original passive, in contrast to the active infinitive ending in re. And we see this long i for passive infinitives in very early Latin inscriptions. But when we put this long i onto the present stem for first conjugation verbs, we have a, a phonetic disconnect with the a ah at the end of the stem and the passive e ending. Loud da e doesn't really work. And so for the conjugations with a long vowel at the end of their stem, conjugations 1, 2, and 4, the e can't just replace the re. Uh, there is an old Latin alternate version of the present passive, the ending ier, and we also see this in poetry. 
Uh, this is probably still the E passive ending combined with the active ERE ending. Uh, some think that it might have started with third conjugation verbs, like DEFENDO, DEFENDERE, DEFENDI, where the passive infinitive DEFENDI, to be defended, is identical to the perfect active indicative form, DEFENDI, I HAVE DEFENDED. So the form DEFENDIER was used for to be defended to clarify meaning. And this ER ending was generalized to other third conjugation verbs like DUCIER and then to other conjugations. So we see this LAUDARIER in Horace and MENTIRIER in Plautus. So here we go, the present passive infinitive. The endings for this infinitive end in a long I, E, but each conjugation does it differently. And these are importantly the present infinitive endings for deponent verbs.